welcome back to Tight Lining Maryland. We're out on the stream today doing a little bit of winter fishing. Um, winter fishing is not easy. It is not for the faint of heart, uh, but a lot of people sit in their houses and in their tying rooms uh, for the duration of the winter. And I think that those people are making a mistake. With that said, today I wanna to cover some different pieces of advice. I don't know if I have a number, but I guess somewhere around four or five uh, tips for people that I think would be helpful if you don't winter fish uh, or winter fly fish often, and uh, just some ways that'll probably increase your likelihood at uh, putting yourself on some fish. So uh, nevertheless, let's get right into it. Let's uh, start sharing some of that advice, but thank you for tuning back in, and I really hope you learned something and enjoy. So one of the first pieces of advice that I want to share with you is just, uh, it's a simple, and I hope that all of these are simple enough to use the next time uh, you go out and fish in the winter, but I also hope that you don't find that it's just almost irrelevant information, like, oh, I already knew that. Um, you know, because sometimes I guess the phrase is, you know, common sense is not always that common. So um, I think that there were things when I first got into fly fishing that like looking back on it make a whole lot of sense, but realistically, I just didn't know any better. As they say, ignorance is bliss. Uh, so one of the things I want to show you real quick is the water behind us and talk about how I'd approach it. Typically in the uh, the summer, I would fish that riffle pretty hard. Uh, it's got nice uh, depth to it. It's got really, you know, a, a food uh, funnel there of, uh, of kind of current. And uh, I think it's a prime location for fish in kind of the, the spring and summer months. However, if you look at the backside of this uh, particular run where basically the, uh, the run turns into the pool, I think at that point, uh, now we have a good wintering opportunity. Now I'm not saying the fish won't hold you know, up towards the top part of the run here in the winter, but realistically, I think that they're gonna hold in this back half to back third, especially with the rocks that we've got back here, the slower current. I think that that's a prime location for a fish to hold. So with that said, one of the first things that I think you should do is you should um, typically fish a little bit different water season to season. And I think when it comes to winter, depending upon the type of water you're on and where you're at temperature wise and how deep you are into the winter, I would typically advise that you're gonna wanna fish a little bit deeper, a little bit slower, but not just the dead slack pools, just something with a little bit less um, kind of flow to it and, and the strength of the current. One of the next things I think you should do in the winter is you should nymph uh, and you should double nymph at that. With that said, uh, I'll show you real quick my setup that I'm using for nymphing. So here I've got my trusty syndicate. It's a P2 pipeline, 10 foot, three weight. On there I've got on an egg pattern and then I've got one of my turbo midges. So I really believe with the power to double nymph, um, you really get a variety of opportunities for these fish to get different looks at your presentation. And with that said, in the winter, I think one of the things you should be doing is having an attractor pattern on and then finally having on more of a natural presentation. What I know of the river system that I'm on is that the fish have spawned upwards of about two months ago. And with that said, uh, they sometimes key into eggs all the way from the time that the spawn happens all the way into spring. And the reason being is because those eggs haven't fertilized yet. It takes months for them to basically become actual trout. Uh, and then moreover, then you get a sucker spawn on top of the fact that you've already had a brown trout spawn. So I like to fish attractor patterns is kind of usually my, my anchor fly. So it could be something like a squirmy worm, could be a mop fly, could be an egg pattern. If I had to pick only one in the winter, I would go with an egg pattern, it's my go-to. And then on top of that, I think you need to fish a little bit more natural. And with that said, I typically like, given that this stream has a good blue wing olive hatch and midge hatch, uh, I just really like to use a, a zebra midge or a turbo midge. The next piece of advice that I would tell you is fish structure. In this particular rear system, one of the stretches I'm fishing right now has heavy rock cover, uh, which is a great ambush point for uh, these fish as they hunker down for the winter. So they're looking for a place that they can kind of just settle down on the bottom, get in that slower current, which a rock provides them that slower opportunity because it uh, basically breaks up the current. And on top of that, um, you know, it's just something that you can attack and get a fish to come out and give you a territorial aggressive strike, whether it's streamer fishing, possibly even using bigger nymphs, whatever the case is, I think you should fish structure like rocks, log jams, lay downs, and things of that nature. Um, and I think that's a good tip year round, but in particular, uh, a great piece of advice to use in the winter.
So as the freezing rain starts to pick up here, I think it'd probably be a good time to give us our last uh, piece of advice. And that piece of advice is gonna be, I think in the winter, you should be strategic about what you fish. For example, you have realistically a bunch of different types of water that you can fish. Well, I shouldn't say a bunch, but a couple different kinds. You could fish um, freestone streams, which are up in the mountains. They basically run off of you know the natural water that's provided from uh, runoff, as well as even uh, rain and snow that we get. The last two types that you're gonna get are kind of like spring creeks and limestoners, uh, which typically you find more so up in PA. And then lastly, you get tailwaters. In this area where I live in Maryland, I can think of at least uh, two tailwaters within an hour of me, and then I can think of roughly, you know, a, a half dozen to a dozen different uh, spring creeks that are fed here. So with that said, I think you need to be strategic about fishing in the winter and choose to fish uh, the tailwaters and spring creeks. The reason why I'm advertising and kind of telling you that you should be fishing those particular styles of water is that they are more temperature regulated. So for example, freestoners really are great to fish kind of from April to May, and then I would even say from possibly September through October. And the reason why is because at that point, the water is just warming up or just starting to cool off. And those fish are turning on and getting ready for uh, spring. And then also they're getting ready in the, the backside of that, getting ready for winter. However, when you fish a tailwater in a spring creek, what you're gonna find is, is those temperatures realistically never drop below 40 and typically will not go above 60 to 65. So as a result, you get more consistent fishing, especially when you get into the winter time so I find myself wanting to fish uh, tailwaters and staying a little bit more local whenever it gets to be really cold or really hot so that I can guarantee myself a little bit more consistent action. But if you want year-round consistency, far and away, a spring creek is your best bet because usually you're going to find them in the 50s all year round.